Amidst the turmoil and doubt of his first Manchester City season, Pep Guardiola took his embryonic team to Monaco and sought to build on, rather than defend, a stunning 5-3 win from the first leg. His apparent mantra that attack is not just the best form of defense, but the only form of defense, was put to the test. The Blues failed that test, losing 3-1 and going out on away goals, and Guardiola's bold tactics were questioned. Why did he only employ one defensive midfielder when his side had a two-goal lead? Why set up with five attacking players against a Monaco team that would be on the front foot from the off? The fickle football jury was back in, and the verdict was that Guardiola, attacking coach extraordinaire, could not organize a defensive piddle up in a brewery. This, after a run of eight wins and two draws had many of the same critics cooing that he had finally started to impose himself on English football. The Catalan took no notice, of course. He listened to his trusted lieutenants, examined the errors in meticulous detail, and evolved accordingly. Last season, with his team sweeping all before them and showing no fear of anyone, they went to Anfield, intent on imposing their furiously irrepressible attacking style on Jurgen Klopp's pretenders. It failed again, with Fernandinho overrun and Liverpool 4-1 up before anyone could draw breath, and the amateur tacticians were all over it again. Clearly, Pep City were good enough to make light of any defensive shortcomings against ordinary teams but needed more when they came up against other top sides. Guardiola is not arrogant enough to believe he does not need to evolve, and this season at Anfield was different again. Bernardo Silva sat as deep as we have ever seen him, lining up alongside Fernandinho, and afterwards Guardiola said his team had competed and controlled them. But for Riyad Mahrez's penalty miss, it would have been a near-perfect away performance. The tweak was a compliment to Liverpool, but also a clear sign that Guardiola had abandoned the notion that his irresistible attacking force could not always override its defensive fallibility. This week, he gave Spurs the respect of setting up in similar fashion, with Ilkay Gundogan sitting in with Fernandinho. Again, now that the emotional hubbub of the moment has died down, it was not as far from success as it first seemed, and despite a below-par performance from some of his star names another penalty miss, this time from Sergio Aguero, gave the game a different complexion. The Spurs' goal was down to individual failings, whether you blame Fabian Delfer the manager for picking him in the first place. And yet again after an astonishing run of 22 wins from 23 games, a solitary, single goal defeat, and one that came in a first leg and could ultimately prove irrelevant, brought some truly baffling overreaction. Guardiola did make mistakes, chiefly in team selection, but it was his players who, as Ilkay Gundogan said, have to reassess how they approach big games. But whether the manager goes all-out attack 
or show demonic kind of pragmatism by opting for a little extra security, it seems his critics are always waiting for him.